Good morning, everyone. It's Friday and the sun usually shines on Friday, but it's it's thinking about it. Anyway, I'm really excited because I have Marnie Dawson with me today from Dawson Relocation Services. And there is nothing more important to longtime homeowners than their stuff. Oh, for and sure. Isn't that true, Marnie? And Marnie helps people, I'm going to use the word cope with their stuff when it's time to transition. So welcome, Marnie. Tell us Thank a little you bit so about much. it. Yeah, I like that word cope. Um, yes, because a lot of people are completely overwhelmed with their stuff. Um, I use the word stuff because stuff is like everything from everything in the junk drawer to the most precious antique piece that has been passed down by generation and generation. Um, so yeah, coping, what do you do with it? How, how do you get rid of it? How do you get it to your family member? How do you get that important piece moved to the new place? All those things when it comes and that's kind of who we are and what we do. That's it. So let me ask you a few specific questions. Yeah, I know. Uh, that was very general. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so we'll, we'll, we'll lead into that. So <clears throat> let's say we have, uh, let's say mom, and she's decided she's going to move to community XYZ. How okay. would we, and I say, and she's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? How am I going to pack? Well, I, uh, and I say, well, let me introduce you to Marnie and you come over and let's go through your process a little bit. Absolutely. So I come over, we sit down, we talk about the move. We talk about what the plan is, what um, kind of where you're moving, what, what you're going to take with you, what you think you're going to take with you. What are the things that are sort of getting you stuck? I always find people are stuck on something. So we often spend a lot of time figuring that out first and then moving from there. Um, Can I ask you about furniture placement? I mean, often yep. these people want to take everything and everything is not going to fit. So that's so the, yep. The very first thing we do is if you know where you're going, we pull out that furniture plan and we map out. Um, and I use, a, some people use a computer, but I like to use this magnetic kit that I have because we can do it sitting there in your living room together and we can see what fits and we can pull out different pieces and try it sort of like paper dolls from back oh, in the it's day. So but it's fun. I love that. So, I mean, this is your home. This is your process. This is, I mean, this is, you know, we want to make sure everything is what the client wants and what they want in their home. So we work with them on that um, and do that furniture plan. So by the time we're done, we know what's going to move. So then you can start to think about what's not going to move and what to do with it. Because that's the second thing. First, you want to take everything. And when you learn you can't take everything, then what do you do with everything else? Right. And that there have actually been studies done. It's called possession paralysis, oh. where our possessions hold us hostage in our homes because we just don't know what to do with everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know we used to kid my mom and say, you know, you. she goes, well, you know, I bought this house for my furniture. And I'm like, uh, yeah, that's a little weird. You know, you, it, really, you know, I, mean, I guess if you had billions of dollars, that's okay. But um, just to house the stuff in the furniture is, a, is an expense. It is an expense. And, it, and, and sometimes our homes were great when we were 30 or great when we had four kids or great at some point, but now I know I've had to move as my life evolved. I mean, we right. we evolve, our homes need to evolve with us. So sometimes it's time to go someplace else and, and don't let your stuff, never let your stuff hold you hostage. <laughs> That's sort of my, 
an underlying motto. <laughs> yes. So then do you sit with the individual and help them determine how many of these, like, let's say clothes, you know, some people are able to figure that out themselves, but mm -hmm. some people when they're up in years, even that is difficult and depending on their Absolutely. So, you know, we have your floor plan. We know you have six feet of hanging space in this closet and five feet of hanging space in that closet. So we can start sorting through clothes. Um, I often, a lot of clients look at me and say, I really, really want to do this myself. And I say, absolutely. But picking up a piece of clothes from a clothes hanger, looking at it, deciding if you want it, taking it off the hanger, putting it in the box for donation, picking up the next piece of clothes is exhausting. And who are you talking to? I mean, I have to talk to people to make decisions. So who are you talking to as you look at this and decide if you're going to use it? Or So having somebody like us around to sit with you, we do the hard part. We pull it off the, off the coat rack or off the hanging bar and you look at it and you decide, is this a keep? Is it not? And we're there taking it off the hanger. And a session that you do on your own might, you might get halfway through the closet, but because we're there to help you in an hour or so, we can go through the whole closet together. And it's just a lot easier and it's a lot more fun. Yeah. And you know what? You it can tell like me about that dress. You know what? It sounds like to me having a being in a concierge a shopping, like when you're buying some fancy dresses, they bring the clothes to you, you try them on, and you just give them to the salesperson, yes. and they put them back, or they fold them, or they do whatever, and you don't have to spend your time hanging it up and all mm -hmm. of that. Absolutely. So we're not there to make any decisions for you. We help you talk through your decisions and help, help people kind of figure out what they want to bring with them and what's going to fit. And hopefully by the end, we've got our six feet here and our five feet there. And okay. And, and we did it. Okay. And then I know people, I'm assuming that you help people come to peace with the fact that, well, somebody else is going to, you know, we're going to donate this or we're going to try and sell that. And, you don't need to tell me your sources, but I'm assuming you have sources for if you know something, you call somebody in to look at it to see if it has a value. Absolutely. I mean, the things that we brought into our home, we brought into our home for a reason. So when we get rid of things, we really want to figure out some good places for things. Now, not everything's good and not everything will, sometimes we will say that's trash to you. But most of the time, if it's something that can be sold, we will help find that person to make that connection to help sell it. Um, all the way down to even when back to the clothing thing, we even know that, you know, Eileen Fisher will take back some of her clothes. So as you build, I had one client, we've spent a lot of time and we had the donate pile, the Eileen Fisher pile, and and the vintage um, the vintage dealer pile. At, so as we're sorting, we had three different piles for where things go. So we're always looking for ways to rehome your, rehome your, I like rehome. I like that too. In I a way like that's meaningful. I like that too. Even young people, and I want longtime homeowners to know this, that even if you're 30 and you're moving and you're, you need to rehome things, you want them to, you want to know that they're going to use. I mean, even like people getting rid of baby things, like I'm not having any more babies, so I want to get rid of all of this, but you don't want to just not going to throw them away. You want people mm -hmm. to, you want to feel like, Hey, somebody's going to get some good use out of this. Absolutely. And we all know of the thrift stores of the Goodwills and things, but there's other resources out there for donating your items. Um, there's a huge network of people who are doing things for refugees right now. Okay. Um, and then there are some resale stores and some people that buy things and some auction houses doing good things. So there's lots of 
different. That's great. Creative ways to, to rehome things. That's terrific because I think that really helps. It, it helps in the process that, you know, it's not in vain that you bought all this stuff and now we're just throwing it out the window, but it's going to help somebody else. I know we like to say that about homes that you were so happy raising your children and they grew up here and they went to the schools here and they grew up and are happy contributing adults now and now it's time for this home to do that for another family so absolutely the home and the belongings absolutely right. yes we want go, go ahead. ahead now i was just going to ask i didn't mean to cut you off at all but then i was going to ask now you coordinate the move the pack let's yeah so so there's the getting ready and figuring mm -hmm. out what's going to come and what to do with the things you're not going to take. And then the magic happens. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so you're thinking about moving and you're thinking about boxes and you're, oh my goodness, there's all this stuff. So we come in and pack um, it for the move. And we pack with this intention of unpacking is how I call it. Cause everybody says, why are you, why don't I just hire the movers to pack? Well, I've heard, I think it's an urban myth, but I've heard so many people tell me about the movers who pack their trash and because, and, and because they, they just come in and they pack your home and they pack the trash and they don't even think about it. We're not going to pack an urban the myth. <laughs> <laughs> it's I've heard the story from hundreds of people. So we're not going to pack your trash. We're going to pack in an organized fashion. We even have a system for how to pack your dressers because that is the number after people say, what do I want to do? What are you going to do with my stuff? Then they ask me, do I have to pack my dresser? That's like the second question people are worried about. So do so, you, I mean, I know a lot of movers will move this stuff with it in it. More and more movers are asking you to pack your dresser because, okay. because the age of the dresser, the, hey. the structure of the dresser, a lot of the Ikea furniture and hey. things that were hand built are not strong enough to withhold hey. the weight of the furniture and tipping it. it. So most movers have sort of come to the statement of, can you pack the dresser? Most, not all. <laughs> but, so we'll, we, but we have a system for it too. So we know what goes in drawer number one, two, three, four, five. So when we unpack you, we're putting everything back right in the same way into your um, dresser. So that's the magic. We pack, we're with you on move day. I have clients that go get their hair done, go have lunch, go. Wow. Can I hire you next time? Just, you know, you don't have to be so, oh, hey, you do not have to be uh, a long time. You do not have to be over 80 to hire Marnie no. because. Hey, no, we're, we're, yeah. You know, moving causes a lot of people just anxiety, even though mm -hmm. they're not uh, doing anything. It's just it, it, it's too much commotion. It's change. It's change. Change on any level is hard. And ha having your life put in a box and having it picked up by strangers and taken somewhere else is hard. And then having to adjust to the new space and figure it out is hard. So so that's where that's why it becomes stressful um we the other part of our magic is once we get there to your new place we have your floor plan we put everything in the right spot we unpack and set you up pretty much everything the day you move in wow unless you bring a lot of complicated things but right yeah but yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll make, we make the bed the lamps are plugged in Sometimes the pictures are hung on the wall. Wow. The wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. And do people sometimes use you guys just to help them declutter? Yeah. They're not moving. I don't know if you know this about realtors. They walk in your home <laughs> and they say, you got too much stuff here. We want you to do some decluttering to prepare to put your home on the market. Yeah, um, maybe I would say that once or 16, 40 million times. Yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we'll come in and work with you and help you do that. And we're going to try to kind of do the double duty of helping you to get your downsizing done a little bit as we're doing it, because it's even harder to pack everything up and then have to go through all the boxes that you put in the basement or you moved to the storage again and figure out what fits. So we're going to try to expedite it a bit for you and make it a little easier on you. And I have a thing about moving stuff. Well, first of all, full confession, I'm a minimalist, so I don't really have this problem. Um, but don't pack stuff and keep it in a storage unit for 10 years and you're paying for this and you're never going to use it, never see it, never touch it. And it, it, it's just a burden. It's a burden and the mat and it's expensive. Right. I mean, storage has its place. There are times you need to move things out when you're preparing your home for market. Sometimes you need to move things out and put them out of the way for a little while until you're ready to go. Right. I mean, there are times it's an important piece or sometimes we'll use it. You have a closing coming up and we'll put things in storage um, because we know that we're going to ship them to your kids or your kids are going to come into town. Right. So we use them, we use them for certain tactics to kind of help with the process, but not I think of it as a temporary place, not a long term. Exactly, exactly. I mean, a lot of times people move out of their homes and their other home isn't ready, they're building it or they're still looking so they can use that as a, but temporary is the key word here, temporary. In our, humble, in our humble opinion. <laughs> you know, everybody's entitled to do whatever they want to do. If they want to just pay for storage and that's how they want to spend their money, go ahead. But yeah, but they the are saddest likely thing, to go remember what's in there. I know. The saddest thing is a piano that was stored in storage for, I don't know, like 10 years. And then at the end, because it was stored there, none of the piano dealers wanted it. And I ended up having to to have the junk haulers haul it away. And it made me cry when I thought about how much money these people had spent storage over the years. What a story. Absolutely. Well, any last tips or anything? This has been terrific. I know the area you do is from, do you go into the city? Where is your? Oh, I am in the city. I'm in the city. Um, I come up to see you guys up in your neck oh, of the woods oh, okay. <laughs> in Northbrook, but, but yeah, and Glenview and all that, but um, we're in the city. We go all the way down to Hyde park to help people. Okay. Um, Good to know. Good to yeah. know. And I'm sure you go to Skokie, Morton, whatever. Oh, yeah. Anywhere, yeah. anywhere in between. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we're, my key tip is don't let your stuff hold you hostage. There are yeah. solutions. There are, you know, and, Things can be rehomed. There are meaningful ways to rehome your stuff. I love that. I love that. That is a great way to end. And I want to thank you so much, Marnie. And I want to wish everybody a very happy weekend. I think Sunday is supposed to be very sunny and beautiful. And um, thank you. Thank you for thank you. me today. It's always fun to chat with you. Uh, thank you.